Welcome everyone to our supplemental Skywarn training and tonight we will look at uh, how to send reports into our office uh, through the computer. Um, obviously our number one way to send in reports is through our toll-free number at 1-800-287-2498. Uh, but this we wanted to give you some other options, especially this will be good for, oh, historical reports that you're, you know, you've come home after the storm's hit, you've already got some, say, golf ball size hail on the ground, and you want to report that. And so uh, this is good for more of a historical look. And um, so other options other than the telephone, which of course is our top one. But anyway, so we're going to take you around our website, how to send reports and some different things that might interest you as Skywarn certified spotters. If you guys are here today, um, you probably had attended our uh, rep webinar, our full training on April 7th. And just wanted to give you a little shorter spiel of what to do. So we are at our uh, website at weather.gov forward slant boo uh, that you can see up here now. And what we're gonna do is first take you to the, on how to send a report. So we'll look at some other things here in a little bit, but first, as you can see, there's a series of drop-down menus under current hazards, current conditions, radar and such. So we'll kind of cruise around those a little bit later, but for now, let's go to current hazards and you see this drop-down menu and we'll go down to submit storm report. And so we will click that and this will get you to a series of different ways to send reports. We're going to be using this top one submit report, but there's other ways you can send reports through, say, Facebook and our Twitter account. And these are also good for sending us videos and pictures of events, whether it be tornadoes or hail falling or what have you. And so that we just give you a lot of uh, variety of ways to send information to us. Uh, below that on the bottom, you can see uh, it's just kind of definitions, tornadoes, damaging winds, hail, some different uh, sizes that you may encounter, flooding. So just different additional information as spotters that you might need. But anyway, let's go back up to submit report. And we're going to click this link here. And this is going to send us to another page. And it's fairly small, but you can see it says, please select report type and it's going to give us another drop down menu. So you can, whether it be tornado, funnel cloud, flooding, hail. Uh, for this, let's just hit hail. And we're gonna hit next. And then um, it'll give you a select hail size. You can either estimate it if you don't have a ruler with you. Uh, let's say I've got my good old handy dandy ruler and I'm going to select the hail size and I've got a hung, I've got some Oh, this two inch diameter, I love lime, so we're going to call it lime hail, um, two inch diameter hail. And you can make remarks. And so I could say, uh, say lime hail covering the ground. Yikes, uh, that sounds like that might be pretty destructive. Anyway, so what we'll do is then click next. And, the, and that remarks, you can put a, a variety of remarks. Maybe you've got some street flooding from the hail or rain whatever you might choose. The next part of the report is sending it uh, or giving your location. You can either use your uh, smartphone's location or you can um, type in your address or just find your place on the map. And so for our um, example, I'm just gonna put our office up here in Boulder. So we're at 325 Broadway in Boulder. Uh, if I can spell right, Boulder, Colorado. And you click on find address and voila, and you'll see this little teardrop black dot. And that's essentially your location if it thinks it got it right. And you click next. And now you're gonna have a box where it's kind of the summary of what happened. You're gonna have, it'll give you your lat longitude, your hail size, your remarks, and then also make sure at the bottom that you also put your spotter number. So for me, I am in Low County, I'm at W200, even though I'm up here in Boulder. Um, and then I would send my report. Um, and actually, once you do that, that'll actually get to a forecaster's workstation in less than a minute. So it's almost in real time. So it's pretty good. Um, again, you know, when we talked about reporting, the phone's the best. 
the phone is is great because it also gives you a kind of a, a two-way um, a conversation. So if you have questions for us, or maybe the forecaster has a question of what you're seeing, we can have a little conversation there. Anyway, so that's kind of pretty basic, simple, how to send a report. And we're going to kind of back out of this and get back to our main homepage. So again, we're back at weather.gov forward slant BOU. And we're going to kind of start back up here at the top. And under news headlines, you'll see things like um, if there's a big storm coming, there'll be a link to information from that. Um, for now, on our live feed, it's just our Skywarn spotter training. This was uh, before our event on April 7th. And it would have information if I clicked on there. It would actually, and if you scroll down, it'll give you a location of all of our, unfortunately, our canceled locations, at least through May. Uh, we do have some spots that are we're still hoping to um, do live training in May and through early June. Um, but as time goes along, our maybe confidence on these happening is getting less and less. But we'll see how things play out. We won't make that call until uh, uh, we know for sure. Um, so this is where you can get all of our Skywarn training calendar for future events that we might be posting. Uh, that will always be up there on the, well, sometimes on the news headline. The other place you can get that if you go over here to local programs and you go down to 2020 spotter training, you click that, and essentially you'll get to the same place. Okay, so let's keep moving along. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit more. And as you can see in the center, we have this kind of big old map of uh, most of Colorado. And this is where all of our highlights will be. And if there's a big event or maybe there's a big winter storm, there's going to be a lot of color coding over this map, whether it be warnings or advisories. On this particular example, um, you can see in this kind of uh, pinkish reddish color uh, and the corresponding events is over here. But we have red flag warnings um, over the sub portions of the southern portions of Colorado and up there. But if we had uh, tornado watches or tornado warnings, those would always also show up. Um, depending on where that location might be. Well, we call this our point and click map. And what we, you would do, you know, there's a couple of ways. You could either click here. So if you live here, oh, let's, let's go over to Sterling. And let's click Sterling, Colorado. And it's going to take you to another page. It will get you to, usually there'll be an observation site. So here's at Sterling Airport, nice balmy 73 degrees on this particular day. But if you scroll down, you, if you like pictures, it'll get you your picture forecast and your highs and lows. A little bit more detailed forecast with more text and words down below that. Um, and you keep scrolling and there's just tons of information. If we go down here to the bottom right, you can see here we get to the hourly weather forecast and you click that. And maybe you want some more detail on your day. Maybe you've got uh, doing some gardening at two o'clock in the afternoon, what's the temperature is gonna be? And so you can scroll through these, uh, whether you want to know temperatures or dew points or the winds, um, and you can look forward to that. Um, you can go forward two days and look maybe a few days further into the future. So by the later in the week. Um, so a lots of detailed information is available there. All right, let's uh, back out of this a little bit. And we'll go back to our home page. Uh, another way you could find your forecast, if you go over here in the upper left, you could do the same thing. So again, maybe I'm still looking at Sterling, Colorado. And you would type in Sterling, and it'll give you a choice of things, and you and hit go. And essentially, it would get you to the same place. So that's that. Let's continue on our little tour of our uh, website. And now let's towards the bottom left. And one of the main things as trained Skywarn spotters is to get in the habit of looking at our weather story and hazardous weather outlook on a daily basis. And your weather story, and if I click on this big old picture, and of course there's not much going on in this current tonight phase, 
Uh, but this is where you'll see kind of a, a, a depiction of what's our main big impact weather-wise. Is it going to be tornadoes? Is it a hail day? And there'll be indications of that on this weather story. Now, to go along with a kind of that picture view, we're going to back out of this again. The accompanying text product that goes kind of along with this weather story is what we call the hazardous weather outlook. You probably remember that from training. And if we click on that, and essentially this is going to give you a text product, a little bit more detail on what's going on, what's the main weather concern of the day. And on this particular day, fire danger elevated across portions of our plains. If there was thunderstorms, tornadoes, we talk about that quite a bit more in detail. And then also another important thing is a spotter information statement. And uh, this will tell us if we're expecting um, spotters to be activated on any given day. So uh, for an example, I might say spotter activation might be needed over the plains of Northeast Colorado after 2 p.m. So you might always want to kind of check that on a daily basis. Uh, we'll issue this early in the morning, usually around oh, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. or so, and then we usually update that later in the morning if conditions have changed. So also two important products to kind of take a look at on a daily basis. As spotters, and of course with situational awareness, you'll probably also want to take a peek at the radar from time to time. And uh, you can get to that from clicking this middle button icon and you can get to our defaults as the base reflectivity covering the um, northern northeastern Colorado. Our, air, our radar is located at Front Range Airport at KFTG. And if you could look on this left-hand column, there's a variety of different radar products that you can look at from the composite reflectivity, which is kind of looking at the entire, um, all the slices that the radar scan is doing or just the base reflectivity at 0.5 degrees. You can look at the velocity, whether it's storm relative or base, and also rainfall, whether it be the one hour totals or storm totals. You can loop these um, up here. There's aero navigation. So say I wanted to look north at Cheyenne, I could click over to the Cheyenne radar. Uh, maybe I wanted to look over at Goodland and I can go diagonally down towards the Goodland radar site. So you can get to a lot of data, a lot of different radars uh, from our radar sites that we have on our webpage. Okay, um, there's a loss of, well, let me go back, I'm not even in the right, uh, go back to Denver, back to our homepage. And you can see there's a variety of different other icons, winter weather decision support. Uh, once kind of severe weather in summer comes in, that will change to severe weather. And you could click on that uh, for winter for now. If you did click on that, you can look at snowfall potential. Um, and this will actually give you some probabilistic ranges of snowfall, give you ranges of what to expect. And uh, so that's some interesting things you can look at there. Uh, at the bottom, you know, they've got some surface maps, drought monitors, air quality from the Department of Public Health and Environment down here in the bottom right. Okay, so there's kind of a basis of, of some different things. Now let's kind of go back up towards the top and we'll look at some of these drop down menus. Um, current hazards, you know, we talked about submitting storm reports, we went over, we want to look at current conditions. Uh, radar will take you to that same uh, area we looked at earlier. Forecast, uh, one thing that folks like to look at is our forecast discussion. Forecasters write this multiple times during the day and kind of get you in the forecaster's head of what's going on. Kind of a scary thing maybe sometimes. Anyway, that's another product you can look at. Um, as we get into uh, river, rivers and lakes. We click on that. And as we get into later in the spring, early summer, we get into snow melt and we start to worry about concerns for river and stream flooding from snow melt or spring thunderstorms. And this is our uh, Advanced Hydrological Prediction Services page, otherwise known as AHAPS. 
And right now you can see all these little green circles and squares and that indicates current stream and river levels. And if there was flooding, um, and you see there's a, a legend over here on the right, so if we start to get near flood stage or flooding, minor flooding, orange, reds, or purples, these green uh, dots or squares or diamonds will turn to those colors. And so that's another way to maintain situational awareness um, as we go into the spring and summer seasons. So we'll back out of that, back to our homepage. Um, there's another drop down for climate. So if you're ever interested in climate information, what the high and low at Denver was today, that will get you, click on the local and that will get you to there. Um, local programs, uh, we can, there's a whole slew of information and we will go down to our Sky One preparedness because this is where you guys might need to find additional information. And we will click that. And what we will do now, I realize some of this is kind of gets buried in our web page, and that's why we kind of hold this so it'll help you get there quicker. Um, if you on the top part, if you click on that local Denver Boulder Skywarn spotter information, and this takes you to the our local Skywarn page. Uh, kind of a brief summary of what Skywarn is all about, and then down below, how to become a spotter. So you could click here and that gets to our training calendar of when we're offering training. Uh, scroll down a little bit more. Some of you may have taken the Comet online uh, training, um, which is a nice national course that kind of goes over all the basics. Uh, for folks that are already trained, you can hit the Skywarn Spotter News. And this will take you to an update of what's happening um, usually what we'll have up here is training links for upcoming training. And then also once training is completed, um, I usually will put a, a stamp, a date mark on uh, when I've sent out spotter letters and emails were sent. And so that way you'll kind of know when to expect information from us in the mail. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, um, you know, with our Skywarn program, it's not just severe weather in the summer, but winter time. And so some of our folks send in their monthly snowfall. So if we click on this, just for example, for this year, and you can see all of our stations over here, yellow on the left, and all of their snowfall, monthly snowfall, um, updated through March. And this is some of our seasonal totals. Um, if you're interested in this, you can always send me and shoot me an email and we can get you on that table as well. Kind of a fun thing to do. Um, then what we also will do is make snowfall maps based on your Skywarns reports and also from our cooperative observer networks. And for example, we can click on February. This was our February snowfall based on reports that were sent in. And then, of course, we make seasonal maps. And we've been doing this so oh, ever since about the early 2000s. So you can both go back and look at some historical information there. OK, uh, finally, we'll scroll down a little bit more. So there's all that Skywarn stuff. Let's back out one page. And if we continue, and this will also give you some more of your guidelines, which you will also get, um, you, I think, receive from your documents in the um, the overall Skywarn training. But there's things to report. So whether it be severe weather in the summer, winter weather in the winter, um, local resources, some of the things we've talked about, um, a few links to our amateur radio local groups, the Denver group, there's a link for them. And for the Northern Colorado group with Aries, there's a link to get their information as well. There's also another variety of online, for those that just can't get enough of severe weather training, there's more. So SPC has got a whole video lecture series on it. Uh, spotter guides, there's a PDF for that. Um, Buford wind scale, Coco Ross that we talked about in training. Um, so there's all kinds of information that's available to you guys for you to use. All right, so those are the kind of the main things I wanted to talk to you about, about our website. The last thing I wanted to do was jump over to the um, SPC's 
website because we did talk about SPC in the in the webinar and how these products are also good to look on uh, as a daily basis. And so this is the Storm Prediction Center. They're at spc.noaa.gov. And this is their kind of main map where the, you know, and they're kind of, again, looking at the, the big picture thunderstorms across the United States, who's focusing in on for severe weather on any given day. And we talked about some of the different outlooks, the day one, day two, day three convective outlooks. And if you go over here on the left, you can get to all that kind of information. So if I click on this map, I can get to the day one convective outlook. And as you can see on this day in April, no thunderstorms here in Colorado. Um, further north, kind of the lighter green, which is kind of your garden variety thunderstorms and a marginal risk here over the Northern Plains and into the Great Lakes for some marginal risk of severe storms. So all those day one, day two, day three outlooks are there from SPC. For those fire weather enthusiasts, there's also fire uh, weather outlooks over the next several days in terms of um, if things are getting hot and dry and windy conditions that might result in fires, forest fires. So SPC also has a whole slew of information and you can spend your time and go through all this different uh, they got forecast tools, mesoanalysis, um, just a whole slew of information for you guys that are interested in severe weather. I'd spend some time in going through some of these uh, different SPC products that get some great stuff on here. Okay, so that pretty much concludes. I'm going to go back to our website again. And I want to just thank you guys for all joining me today for our very short tour around the weather world on our website, how to send reports. If you do have further questions, feel free to email me at scott with two T's dot entrekin. That's spelled E-N-T-R-E-K-I-N. And I'll be glad to help you in any way as I can. Um, thank you guys very much. Uh, be safe. Hopefully we'll be able to get out live later this spring or summer and do some live training. But for now, we'll just do it through webinars and online uh, devices. So thanks again. Uh, be safe and we'll talk to you all real soon.